Introduce yourself first and then go ahead. Good morning, I am Wendy Brewster. I live at 59 6th Street, Batu Avenue, Marabella. My concern is the stench, the toxic chemical that is being dumped into the river as we speak on a daily basis. I have tried all means to solve the situation. Now why it is um, such an issue is because my lungs were permanently damaged. I was diagnosed <coughs> chemically induced pneumonitis. That is from the former Petrotrin Limited Company, the oil spill that occurred in the Guaracara River in 2014 in the month of July. Right? Somewhere between the 28th, the 29th, the 30th. And the manner in which matters were done concerning this issue is another reason that I am speaking against this now. Because a lot of promises were made then and none were adhered to. A lot of promises were made to the residents, the fence line residents at that time. And it was just for a show. Also, reporters were prevented from coming in to see the real effect of the oil in the river when that happened. And I am going to be referring to this matter because it deals with this matter here right now. When the accident occurred, reporters were prevented by security or police or whatever you want to term them of Petrotrin Limited. I'm not going to mince my words or apologize for anything I say. They were prevented from coming to see the oil that stayed concentrated in the Guaracara River in this part for two to three weeks at least. A bond was put on the left side of me I just have to put my left hand. <laughs> All right? By my neighbor, when I did the research, my son pulled up the thing for me to do the research because I'm not really savvy, savvy on the computer. He pulled it up and I did the research. The river was not even cleaned in the manner that it was supposed to be done. But they went to the press and did damage control and promised this and said they did a good clean up. It was not done in a proper manner. And from by my neighbor on the left hand side, oil was being cleaned up from there. But from my neighbor to us, to the people on the right hand side, the oil was not being cleaned up. That is number one. Number two, they did not come and offer my family any medical assistance until long after. The first person who saw about my family was my personal physician and my family's physician. I will not call his name because I did not tell him about this interview. He saw about me and all my children and treated us. Then I went by another private doctor. He saw about us. And the only time I was seen about by Petrotrin doctors was when I forced myself and my two younger children. They were very young then. They are now 18 years old and 15 years old. That happened in 2014. Do the maths. I had to walk up by the gas station to get medical assistance the gas station what location that is that gas station up there when you were doing the filming um point up here i would say by the roundabout and there i met i think it was mr david abdullah it was somebody who flagged down an ambulance from petrotrin and told them how we were very ill and that is how they took us. They took us to Marabella Senior 
comprehensive and there were no available assistance there and they took us after that to the Augustus Long. It was the first time we were ever treated. My son started to vomit in the ambulance that I remember. I remember when some a group of Petrotrin officials came here <clears throat> on a Saturday. I don't know how many days after the oil spill, but I have to look in notes to verify that and I can't do that right now. And they, their extent of medical intervention was they sounded the, us. My children were playing outside because children are children. They were playing. They didn't have a candy wool and they sounded all of us and said, um, your chest sounded good. Drink plenty milk and go outside and get some fresh air. Well, I wanted to. I, I didn't know how to accept that statement because there was no fresh air available. So I was looking kind of dirty too. Eh? I, I blame that on me. I had on a white, I was looking kind of dirty. My hair come. I don't come in here when I'm home. My hair was worse than this and unkempt. So they probably say, well, that is some idiot, some illiterate fool, and they bound to treat us properly. And that was the extent of their intervention. They promised to get us medical help and they never did. It's only when I went to those children, we were taken and it had been an uphill struggle since then because they have been doing the damage control. They had meetings with the residents. The residents get fed up. A, a girl lost her twin the same night of the accident and you know that is hurtful. It's hurtful to lose a full, full term child to have a stillbirth and I know because I went through that. She lost a twin as a direct result of the oil spill occurring and she was so traumatized she didn't even want to pursue anything. She never dealt with it. Our good friend died of cancer. Remember Sylvia who used to always be with me? Um, the older lady, she died. Mm -hmm. Another resident came and spoke to me and said, you know how much people die with cancer about 15 and she started to call names but seeing that is my husband was here as a baby i came to live here i don't really know people name i just know the face but it's at least 15 people since that accident have died of cancer related injuries or damage i should say some people have died of kidney failure i'm saying this to make it known why doesn't the government they do surveys and all kind of unimportant things how much people in the house where what is your job status why don't they do a survey and how many people have died of cancer kidney problems and that type of thing around here because it's not in their interest you see when the brewster and the 200 plus residents don't make money for the government the oil company does that whatever company does that so it's not in their interest to do a survey why don't you do a survey i am telling you saying publicly it's time to do a survey to see how many people have died of cancer of kidney problems how many people have had respiratory illness and have had to move away from this area due to that what about us residents who we own our properties and cannot move away because the first thing people that say is um <clears throat> why you don't move well i'm publicly stating this once you open your household to me let me tell you my situation i have seven children and one husband so i need a big house so open your houses to me and i will move in with my whole family and i don't want a, a apartment because i've been there done that i want a big house big yard this property is big you know i want a big yard with trees with the same amenities it's a big old house but it's big and it's clean and it is comfortable for me i even have a recording studio which is two four and a room <laughs> <laughs> yeah yes i have a recording studio i do drama by the way and do my pieces anyway let's me come to now nikon limited is operating under heritage 
on the former compound of Petrotrin Limited. Every day since their operation, it's a stench, but it's not the oily kind of stench. Sometimes you get that when the rain about to fall. It's a stench like if long time people know about latrine, how a latrine does smell, we'll think about a thousand latrine. It's a stench, it's a foul, noxious odor. Sometimes you get an odor of um, like rotten eggs. Sometimes you get an acidic type of odor. Sometimes you feel like your face, like ants biting you all over your face. Sometimes when you wash your face, you taste metal in the water that is running off. Right? Sometimes you don't get a smell. Before you get the smell, you start to feel thirsty. Like if you're left in the middle of the desert and I have been following my doctor's orders because I have had lifestyle diseases that I have to attend to before the oil spill, which they knew about. So I drink at least two liters of water per day. So I have no right to be getting up every morning or every other morning with, the, with my tongue stuck to the roof of my mouth, thirsty, dry, mouth dry stick down that I can't even talk or say anything until I unstick that tongue from the roof of my mouth right sometimes before you smell the odor you feel thirsty and a drinking water when the odor happens now when that happens because it's 24 hours right no rest my pressure which is what I'm dealing with and sugar which the highest used to be 150 in the sugar area right and the highest in pressure used to be like 146 over 90 so something right or one right after the oil spill i'm going back to the oil spill it went up to 270 something over 100 and something in the hospital right like 276 over 110 that kind of reading my sugar also they got problem to control it on hospital diet for at least two weeks they got trouble so they were giving me 10 units of insulin because they had to stop the tablet put me on insulin they had to raise it to 25 units in the morning 26 in the night now with nikon Coming on stream. I'm not home. I realize that. How long? Wait, you need anything? Yeah, I need to go. I need my paint and thing to go on the road. So you want to get in? And you have the remote? No, sorry, Bob. I give you back the remote. Um. There is a fella from um. From <laughs> Skiffer. He he should yeah. be there. See, well, I, well, I, rang the bell, I rang the bell twice and I get no response. Oh, gosh. Oh, you, you can't get in somehow, boy? No, no, no. All right, tell me something. What is his name? I don't know his name, you know. Just call he Skiffer now. Just say Skiffer. He's, a, he's from Grenada. I know. He, 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 he up in Skiffer Branch all now, I believe, because we get no response. I will go and find out if I can help. If I can pick up with him. I'm going to remote or something. Well, try that now because I do not interview in Marabella right now. Okay, all right, okay, okay. I'll see what I can do. All right, cool. Right. Hang up. Yeah. <clears throat> Outside. Yes. So. <laughs> Where? <laughs> so um okay since nikon started this operation let me start over from there the odor has been foul of a different kind right now as as the breeze changes you smell it even though i have to have incense burning every day in every room i go to 
if I go to the toilet, I have to have the incense burning. If I go to the washroom to wash clothes. So every single room has to, to have to put incense. So I've had expenses in incense. I've used 20 boxes in a short space of time. So I've had to start to buy it like bulk now. Like if I'm going to sell. So 50 incense in a pack. Right? Right? So that is one of these things. I've had to go to seek specialist treatment because my doctor realized it is out of his hands certain things what are happening and he needed an expert to see about me so he sent me by one of the specialists now my skin is one of the issues between two days ago i did not have this so i have had boils coming out on my hands and and on my feet how are we going to get the ones on the feet i have had when i stand up you will get it right boils have been appearing all the time all these and it has been it's ugly when they are healed they heal with black marks so i have my feet are covered with them i've had them under my armpits i've had them all over my skin at different points and I use a wound healer cream which is 225 for that tube the, the doctor um, prescribed me and I if I using that to heal these wounds these boils that keep appearing that is minor but also what started to be worrisome now are some lumps started to appear under my skin on my legs the now if you are diabetic sometimes you get problem between your toes so i have to be very careful with the problem between the toes now due to the proximity and due to the 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 what is going on as a direct result of mm -hmm. that noxious fume my feet were not healing properly I do not want and I do not intend to stay by and lose my feet. Right? I do not intend to be sacrificed on the altar of anybody, any company's negligence. I don't intend to be a sacrifice. So that cr ointment that I have to use has honey in it. Mesetron. I believe the name is Mesetron. I could be mispronouncing the name. It is very expensive. I have to use that continuously. I have to use charcoal continuously. Sometimes in the night also you get a loud boom. Now, twice there were explosion on the compound since the operation of this company. And I have started to do research on the company. Now, I don't believe that this company has any, what I should say, they are not a local company. And where they are situated in the first world country, I believe it is away from civilization. Like far away, like more than three miles away. Now, due to former research, it has been said you have to have at least three miles away when any spill happens or any accident people are affected we are not three miles away from here right i'm sure the bright people in the governance of trinidad and tobago they are brighter than me they know that i'm sure they know that so this first accident happened it was an accident but it was due to negligence because they were told to fix their tanks when um it was examined they were told long time ago it did not have to reach to that okay but it was an accident but i am of the opinion this is my opinion 
because this first company had the accident and what occurred and the residents did not get together as they were supposed to and do a class action lawsuit against the backside i could use backside you used it already truth i didn't even realize <laughs> everybody have a backside <laughs> some have a front and a back <laughs> right so <laughs> look if i laugh i'll cry because they got away with the accident and the, the people some of them did not have the knowledge or they did not have the determination or the they got fed up people got fed up because they were promised things and every month the company would say next month we'll see about all you but once i hear that i know they're lying so i didn't bother after a while when i see four years coming up and the statutes and limitation going to run out i had no choice but to leave them right and go and pursue the matter on my own and the first company settled out of court twice once for me once for my children 2017 to 2020 and it was not the right settlement because i had to go on my own the lawyer i was given had to move so he sent the papers to another lawyer and but they were advising me what to do but in the meanwhile four years was coming up and i didn't have a choice but to do the matter on my own and i did not have the right knowledge legally because i'm not a lawyer so i did not do the proper checking i did not do the proper calculation of what i am supposed to settle for but at least i did not settle for an insult like fifteen hundred dollars so I had to say some people took it some residents because they were in their own situation they didn't have a choice petition come and pretend to them and make them sign documents stating they will no longer pursue any matter against the company so that is the way this petition dealt with that matter i want everyone to know that is the way they dealt with it they fooled people and they they, they co-owned them and they said we will do this we will see about you for years to come they said it publicly in the media let us go back and see they said certain things publicly and they never adhered to anything they did not follow usha regulations whatever health and safety rules and they always spoke about health and safety we can health and safety this and health and safety that and they never followed it i am speaking exactly as it is ema now charged them at one point in time no i'm not going to be specific here because i cannot recall off my head what um you know numbers and figures but ema charged them a substantial amount of money for the oil spill while none of ema members were living in the community what did the community get what did the residents defense sign residents of marabella 59 6th street silcott mango n and all the other places that i can't say off the bat what did they get for their injury the smell was insufferable that smell that first time that oil spill happened and now it's being complicated because this has happened now since nikon started operation and you know i was talking to the ombudsman and i was looking hmm, at <coughs> i'm going to burn down the house because i have to spray this right and the perfume sticking like is the internet or what right i just got a whiff of the odor the lovely odor right i was talking to the ombudsman investigator and she was saying one of their i don't know if to call it a mission statement but whatever you call it is clean air so i start to laugh because i want to know which clean air they're talking about now is g something l g to l g t l 
which I think is gas to liquid, right? So I'm not very in that technical area, so I'm not going to be exact, right? Gla gas to liquid. And I am looking at what these people, Nikon, intend to do now. They intend to open this plant here, open that plant, do whatever operation, wherever, right? Just look at it. I'm not going to be... I's not the godmother. I'm not a scientific-minded person. I'm not a legally-minded. So I'll say it in layman's term. And they are stating that this is so good because, um, you know, it is clean air, according to them, and they are promoting the environment-friendly, whatever, whatever. They are promoting all that manner of thing. But two days before I went to the ombudsman office, on the 30th of December, that was the last formal complaint I made I go on a fall off the tree just so boop. that time the stench was at its worst eh? the next day a squirrel fall off disoriented you know when the first accident happened they stayed away for a while we weren't seeing any but after this they started to come back gradually but not all so it started to have birds but I, I don't think it does have any schools of fishes like how I used to see any more in the river because I, don't, I think it's only the Cayman that does be sunning could take that stench. Right? So, we see the Cayman, we see, you know, they used to be hunting iguana and thing, and they used to have a lot. It no longer have that. Right? We have had pets ever since. My daughter always picking up some stray dog or stray cat or whatever. Mm -hmm. Right? This is the first time and I don't know, that have to be America, that have to be God, that the kittens have survived past two weeks. Every time the cats get pregnant here, the children die. If we bring in big enough kittens into our house, they live. But every time the female cats get pregnant, the children die, all of them. And I'm talking about they start to die from the first day, second day. By the third day, there's no pets anymore so this is the first time with well, that mother super protective <laughs> right so those are some of the things otherwise that has been happening now if I don't go against this I'm leaving this problem for my children grandchildren and future generation and I don't intend to do that I don't care if you have the Queen's Council <laughs> as your lawyers and I am just a working class. I'm retired. I'm a retired prison officer. By the way, I retired medically unfit. But by the time 2020 had reached, I had reached the age which is 55 for us to retire. Due to this company and the nonsense, I had a lot of sick leave. I never got the prison service into any disrepute by trafficking or doing anything. But my sick leave was very terrible the record and it's a direct result because the consultant in the hospital told my husband the senior consultant when i came in at first he said do not transfer her to petrotrin hospital that's the first thing he he told him because i was a bit out of it the first time i was warded he said there has always been a problem, but it has been slight. But the spill has aggravated, right? In a big way. So once you were living around here before, you were always subjected to illness as a direct result. So don't let nobody fool and say, oh, ring. that just was aggravated by a thousand times by the spill. I just say in a thousand, slight exaggeration. It could be a thousand anyway. Um, so Nikon must not be allowed why I am going against EME let me tell you why when I went to the health center to be treated by the doctors they told me go by the tongue hole I just say tongue hole I say old people I went by the tongue hole and make my complaint in the relevant health place they did their investigation after their, their investigation they contacted EMA. They told me when they contacted EMA. EMA never came here. 
I will repeat myself. EMA never came here. I, okay, I did that. I complained to the health center again. They said, well, we cannot do anything much more. Right? And I was told by other people, there are a lot of people seeking treatment for illness related to the stench and the noxious fumes. I complained again to the town hall health department. San Fernando, City Hall, right. EMA was contacted again. I called EMA again. On my birthday, last year, the 7th of March, it was so overwhelming, I contacted EMA again. And several times before that and after that. I spoke to Mrs. Bagwandin or Miss Bagwandin, who is directly dealing with investigations i got no response at first i went then to the ombudsman because that was the next step i had to take so me sitting down in front of here is not a fly by night decision i have taken this thing in steps to the relevant authorities i've complained and complained and complained to the relevant authorities. When I went to the ombudsman, they took me more seriously than EME. They started a proper investigation and I must give kudos to San Fernando Ombudsman Office. They take your matter seriously. So anybody out there, you having any situation with any public fig, um, what you should say, not figure, public governmental agency whatever go to the ombudsman office they deal with the matter seriously so they wrote them apparently they contacted them and that is the first time the first time ems set foot on my property was the 13th of october 2022 the first formal complaint i made was on the 24th of may 2022 and that is before that i had made several complaints to eme on the phone because i couldn't be running up and down because that will make me more ill they waited until the rain started to fall heavily and the river was brown i feel they had somebody up here and say hey you go tell me where the river brown <laughs> Because soon as that was happening, and the ombudsman probably forced their hand to come, they came here on the 13th of October. The whole river brown. The smell, bad, but it ain't so bad. Right? Because the rain's falling and it's washing away. So, Miss Ombudsman investigator came with a file with the river black, with the notes, and I had pictures. I said, I have been told by someone, let me put it like how the people does put it, a good source of information, right? And it was a direct source. You mad on my coffee? I think hmm, I'll get rid of that now. Yes. I was told that the wastewater was being directly channeled into the river. Firstly, I believed it because the person was a former worker. It's not my duty to investigate. I'm not being paid. I'm not being paid to say who told me what. So don't even ask. The reason why I believe it is because I have been on the compound for several years. I was a part of Petrotrin Levantamientos. And we used to practice on the exact location, the staff club, on the inside, not the one facing the road, the one where you have to pass security and go in. I practiced there for seven years, being a part of our parent group as a chorus singer. When I got ill, I could no longer sing because two lungs were permanently damaged chemically induced pneumonitis but i knew the exact location and i knew the drainage area because we were familiar with the building 
So that is why it is believable besides to the integrity of the person who told me. But as I say, EMA, you are not paying me to do your investigation. That is your job. You were supposed to go there according to what the ombudsman investigator said. Kudos to her. She knows herself. I don't want to call nobody name on the good side. I will call the people name on the other side. <laughs> right? She came with someone. That's the investigator. EMA came with about seven people in a van. You will swear the oil spilled our cook in October. You will swear I now make a complaint. Right? October the 13th, 2022. They set foot in this property and they started to speak. And you know what? I don't like people insult the little bit of intelligence I have. You know, on my records to go to work, because I've had to review them for another reason. When they did the interview and they said, intelligence they said above average intelligence that was my written record for my prison service when i was going to primary school i was considered very bright mm -hmm. i passed common entrance in the school <coughs> which is a high school in san fernando i was one of the top seven i passed with a scholarship so i was bright at some point in time so even if i got dance now it, I ain't too far gone, you understand? So I don't like people insult my intelligence. The investigator is telling me, telling us, the ombudsman and our family and the neighbor, because I call the neighbor to you and I say, hello, come, I want you to be part of this. So she started to complain about what happened with her. A tree fell somewhere in Williamsville and entered into the river when it fell and it rottened and there was some odor from there so they went up there on my complaint right they went up there to investigate and they were of the opinion that that rotten tree was getting the whole river from quite from Williamsville down to here black and with that stench that foul odor now Antonio trying to insult my little bit of intelligence all you want me to speak in tongues and not in the biblical sense. Right? That's why people just start to cuss and to threaten. Because one of the things I noted, the ombudsman asked them, why people have to threaten all you and get on in a manner for you all to do your job? And I know I never threatened them, so it had to be other people she's talking about. The next thing she asked them is, did you do a side visit on the company? No. So then they started to talk about how they do visit up the road and they talk to people up the road. And then they state in my letter that they sent me because they sent me a letter to her. Eh? But um, I have to collect the documents. I forgot it somewhere yesterday. Right? Stating that I smell Nutramix odor too. But no, no. I have complained about the Nutramix odor too, but I don't smell it. I don't recall ever telling them I don't smell it because I smell Nutramix odor. It's a different stench. So when sometimes that company is throwing the waste and it's smelling stink and it pours for a while in the night, morning, two o'clock, three o'clock in the morning, Nutramix is the next one. The stench of the place. So they just play tag now. When one done, one start. Right? So when they asked, they, she said you did not do a side visit, so you don't know if Miss Booster is telling the truth or she making it up. So she ordered them to do a side visit. Well, boy, you see, after October the 13th, when they got that order, it got worse by a thousand times. The stench got worse every single day and night. I have been, I have had to have, medical treatment since october month i had a show i took part in a show in the bowl on the 30th of october the thursday before that i had to go to liberty medical to be treated my sugar reading was 489 due to lack of sleep for three nights because sometimes when you're feeling sick and you're smelling that 
stench, you cannot sleep. You just cannot sleep. So I stayed up. And due to the fact that I was accustomed to working night duty before, it, it, you know, I could stay up. And I stayed up three nights. And my sugar reading was 49 and I was still walking. I don't know how I was. She said the doctor told me it's due to lack of sleep. It's not due to my habits. Because that is our next game they play with you. They try to make it. Well, you're not doing the proper thing. You're not following the proper diet. And is that what have you said? No, no, no. 2014 to 17, I learned to walk with a walker. I could not walk after the accident. I was provided a wheelchair on the ward to take me to the bathroom. On the 8th of October 2014, I nearly died on the ward because they were mopping with a polish on another ward adjacent to the ward I was on. And I wasn't smelling the polish, but I was feeling a heat intermingling with the oxygen because I was, I had oxygen tank, I had a mass. And I was feeling a heat, and what I recall after is due to the hospital notes. I could not breathe. They had to find a way to get me to breathe. Okay, I lived. Right? God had a hand in that. Right? So, this stench, this set of medical bills that piling up on me, that has me in a financial position where I can barely manage my bills. Right now the internet is cut. Due to them, that's a direct result because I've had to put my money to seek medical attention. Attention. I've had to put my money to seek legal advice. I've had to break a Roy Trin account that I trying to save in order to do so. I've had to not pay certain bills. I've had to not pay a loan due as a direct result of trying to solve this issue. I've had to buy incense by the pack like if I'm selling. Yesterday I bought 50 of these incense. $42 for the pack and I will have to do it like that. I can't go to the grocery anymore and buy a 10 pack for $20. This is what I was doing. After bite in bulk. My daughter has not been able to attend her school as a direct result of being ill. Christmas day, I was ill. I got up 7 o'clock in the night to enjoy my Christmas. I was ill for the entire day. My husband had to call the ambulance and my children and my husband had to attend to me the week before Christmas or two weeks. I'm not going to be exact. I don't have the date right here in front of me. Because the cramp I started to catch due to severe dehydration was not going. With that, my pressure started to raise. My SPO started to go down under 90. The two people in the ambulance did a marvelous job and one was a little boy with milk in the face i say oh my gosh when i see him i say oh my gosh but i was in so much pain and distress however he was very good very competent they told my husband as much as i don't want to go to the hospital i will have to go but they will have to stabilize me first i was given oxygen and they were trying to tell me things to stop the cramp. So eventually I was able to sit up and hang my legs down. And the cramp didn't come back. They were giving me oxygen. By the time they had finished with the tank of oxygen, I my SPO went back up to 98 and I was told that, and they know I didn't want to go. So I was given the choice and I opted not to go to the hospital for further treatment because it didn't make sense because Dr. Jagannath sent me with a letter stating a referral letter to Professor Terence Mongol. It states that it is out of his expertise to deal with my complicated situation. The only doctor available are two 
Michelle Trotman and Professor Terence Simonga, Dr. Michelle Trotman. And the company sent me by Michelle Trotman first. And they sent me with a letter stating, because when they gave me the letter, they sealed it with a staple. So I opened it, it's my letter, it's concerning me, stating this patient is complaining about several illness, but um, they wanted her to state that due, it's not due to the oil spill, it's due to her lifestyle complication illness that she is sick. So, Miss Michelle Trotman, the integrity she showed, she said, I am not able to see you because you did not come to me on your own and I am not, I have concerns with the way the letter is worded, so I will not be able to see you. She showed true integrity. Some of the doctors I was sent to showed true integrity. I will mention Dr. Roy Tillak Dari. Dr. Jones showed integrity. I'm not going to mention those who did not. But I have a letter stating some of those who did not. Right? They treat and Professor Terence Mongol. Because they treated you according to what you were ill with. They did not try to give you medication because that is the next thing. One of the doctors, I presented myself with rash all over, face swollen, my pressure high allergic reaction to chemical he gave me benadryl and thing for the thing and inserted in between a medication that i didn't know the name because it was a scientific name and you know me and no scientist this long complicated thing that i can't pronounce so i carried him in my infirmary officer in work she said don't take that that is zoloft that is when the women have to go to court and they are concerned and they anxious we give them that to calm them so why are you prescribing 30 days of zola for me you want me to be baby and i can't think my thoughts properly so i never trusted them so that is why i went to the prescription so i never took it another one named dr Passad. i'm going to call his name because he tried to force me to accept a medication amnitripoline or i think something like that I see in between the Symbicort inhaler, the Cetaphil cream, the the um the Astelin inhaler, these two inhalers here and this, right? He put in that medication, but I was familiar with that one because the women again in the prison when they were anxious they used to use that. Right? To calm them. And it makes you sleepy too why i said i'm not taking that medication i don't want it he tried to force it a doctor Passad, i can't remember what Passad tried to force me i said i'm not accepting that medication i don't want it i present to you with asthmatic type of complication and you prescribing that so they're playing a dirty nasty game the next nasty game they play because i'm going to make this public when Dr. Ro, um, Professor Terence Mongol told me bring a family member or two to, for him to discuss with them how I was before the oil spill as to after. I agreed. Next thing, the insurance adjuster, Mr. Francis Theophilus or Theophilus Francis, said, um, you don't need to bring anybody. D -d 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 don't bring anybody, right? You alone have to go. They send the vehicle for me and I went. When I went up to Professor Terence Simongol, he said, where are your family members? Now the adjuster was for Petrotrin, eh? Access Limited. They were on behalf. That is the person who, who kept in touch with me so I could get my settlement. So that is the kind of nasty game they played. So I am expecting a nastier game from this company. So here, what, at the end of the day? Throw all your wastewater where it's supposed to be thrown. EMA, when you give people certificate to operate, ensure that they follow health and safety regulations under whatever umbrella it is in Trinidad. Follow the proper health and safety. Don't dump it 
in Guaracara River. We have residents living here on the fence line still. Right? You're already near to people. Not less than three miles. Do the right thing. Right? And I'm not afraid of backlash. I'm not afraid of um, what they call that blackmailing. In the sense that if I have anything in my past, let me tell all you, I nearly get locked up twice. Okay? That in my past. Right? I nearly make a jail. So what all you could dig up on me? I never do pornography for all you to show that. All you have to put my head on somebody's body. Right? So I am not afraid of whatever, however nasty you want to play the game. And a friend tell me, girl, you're afraid they kill you, they'll kill you. I say, God have to give them permission. I and God going good these days. We, we just have conversations. We just have arguments. In fact, one of my books that I'm about to write, yes, I'm about to write two books. One of them is God have vexed with you. Right? If God was like Ole and was like, man, I dead a long time. But God is a loving father to me. He loved me when I was most unlovable. So I don't care who want to do what. Try your best. You're seeing me alone. You're not seeing Papa God behind me. Right? So you could do what you want. You could say what you want. And I have two sons mentally challenged. So dig up whatever you want to dig up. You will not embarrass me. I am biting into this one. Hear me? Do your job. You told us in the company of the ombudsman in front of her that it only have four people to deal with matters in Trinidad and Tobago. While I empathize, I have to feel sorry for my family. Because while the government is turning a slow wheel as to get more workers for you, while they are, if they are sick, they go outside and get treatment if the toenail hurt them and they get a substantial i'm not going to say the amount because i might not be correct so let me say a substantial daily u.s provision for whatever take that substantial daily provision u.s and hire workers for ema so they would not have to come and tell me that they are so frustrated because the woman was genuine i must say that with miss bagwandin even though i'm vexed with ema she was genuinely distraught. Only four workers. Now, what four workers could do for the whole of Trinidad and Tobago complaints? Govern better than that, please. Take that money or let us go all over the place and travel and carry all your wife, concubine, and ten people, or a man or woman or whatever. Take them money and see about the issues in the country, which is supplying workers for these governmental institutions that the workers are suppressed, oppressed and depressed because they can't do their work properly. But at the end of the day, I want this to stop. EMA, go and do your site visit if you haven't done it as yet and ensure that Nikon that they gave the certificate to operate on the heritage are dumping the waste in some truck and carrying it quite or quite or in some deserted place in the country some acreage where you could dump it some landfill i don't know where is the procedure and do it and stop dumping it down the blasted river good day what miss indarjit singh good day mr indarjit singh i heard you are watching right please even though i might appear angry and um passionate about this please pay attention to the ill that it is causing my family and a lot of families i am going to be doing future broadcasts with different media personalities to highlight my serious issue my two lungs are permanently damaged and i be um at a pause you know i have a 
what they call that, whatever going on to ensure that I get my proper benefits in validity so I don't have access to that right now to pay for certain medical treatment, right? The internet is cut due to this. There are certain bills I cannot make. There's, there's a loan. I have one loan to pay, right? I have limited my loan status, you know, I've combined and budgeted to suit. I never hang my hat higher than I can reach. I have one loan and I cannot pay that one loan that I was paying before the situation. So please, whatever you or your corporation can do to fasten the working, to secure, to to help, to assist in this matter, it will be much appreciated. I would also appreciate you all supporting me in my studio venture with my spoken word and my publication of my books. I have already had a publisher, right? Errol Fabian's wife, Jillian Fabian, because I've been in drama years now, and I already started to recording studio so I would appreciate anyone's support. I already have support, I don't get tired. <laughs> One of my drama members, he wouldn't want me to call his name, so I mean, he supported me and the studio <coughs> owner himself is supporting me. Right? Because I did not have the money to start the venture and I've already started it. Two 12-piece albums. Two books. I want my voice heard and God have vexed with you. <laughs> yes, I and God has have these kind of arguments sometimes due to certain things what happen and I find why you let that happen. Like the boy who died the other day, my good friend's son, only son died. I wrote a piece. Their only child died. So that is a new piece I've written. I'll be recording that also. Right? So I and God does have these conversations. So I'll be thankful for your support. <laughs> I have it. You know? <laughs> right? Beautiful surroundings, mad by this. This is a beautiful place. You can't enjoy your property. Right? You can't. Nobody can enjoy it. The neighbor getting boils. So, the neighbor going to the hospital. So, right? Everybody sick around here. The day I went to the lawyer, everybody in the house was sick. One of the neighbors pregnant, she does the double sex. Mm. Jesus. Mm. I'm going to pay for this, you know. But I know. We can leave now? Yeah, let me go now. Yeah, you go, you go, you go. Okay, I go on, eh? Yeah, thank you very much. Yeah. So, you say it went online, so how do I see it? I'm not very professional. Explain to me how to see it. 